I think I can comfortably say that tattoos are now no longer cool. How so? Because I'm looking at a mainstream marketing piece mm -hmm. that shows a dude holding a knife with finger tats. Yeah. If it's gotten to the marketing department and it makes it to the front page of a website, you know, you know the squares are on to you. Interesting. Uh, we don't do tats. Uh, if you guys do, a-okay with us. We just don't do it. Uh, I think you'll put a tattoo on, then you'll end up looking at it 20 years later and go, oh, I'm not really into this anymore. That's the thing. It's like My a girlfriend is gone. I didn't end up marrying her, and I have a tattoo yeah. of her on my arm. Whenever anyone starts talking about it, I'm like, imagine your favorite t-shirt when you're 18, but you have to wear it every day of your life. Some tats are cool, though. I have seen some great tats, and if they're done tastefully, I'm like, okay. They're outnumbered on. about 100 to 1 by bad tats. <laughs> Season 2 of Game of Thrones. Dude, I love Game of Thrones. I'm going to love it forever. Guys put Game of Thrones yes. tattoos on? Yes. Oh, short-sighted. Yep. Okay, uh, so do you feel better after talking about that? Bit, yeah. So it's the bottom line is once you see it in mainstream marketing, which you're looking at right yep. now on your tablet, yep. it's no longer cool. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. And now let's talk about a blade. One of our favorite blades in the SOG lineup was the Aegis. I looked for our full-size Aegis that we have camped with for years, and I cannot find it. It might be in some system squirreled away. It's oh, somewhere. you know what? I bet you I know where it's at. It was uh, dedicated to a bug out kit because mm. it's so lightweight. I bet you it's in a bug out kit. And I wouldn't even dig it out for this review, guys. Your bug out kit is sacred. Don't dig into it. Don't take anything out of it unless it's an emergency. Just like I talked about in that series of videos, you might be tempted, but here's what's going to happen. I pulled that soggy just out. I forget to put it back. And then lo and behold, we get an earthquake. We take the kits and I don't have my soggy just. Yep. I bet you that's where it's at. Now, we do have a mini Aegis, and just imagine that it's a, a, a little bit bigger than this one right here. So this is the original formulation of the Aegis, right? Yep. And this is wearing my wicked Edge Pro Apex Edge on it. And this one is made out of cryogenically treated OS 8, the mini Aegis. Uh, so many things we loved about this knife. We don't want to review it all over again. We'll just super quick go over them. It's just lightweight. So fast, so fast, really sharp, adequate steel, flat ground, precise tip for digging splinters out in the out of doors. Again, this is a backpacking blade that we've always used, right? Pretty much excellent jimping on the top. Uh, medium traction on the side. There's some Kraton inserts in this version. And the greatest feature of all. What? The safety. Oh, I hate Isn't that awesome? I hate the safety. Dude, on on so cool. a lot of them, I'll put a drop of super glue in there so I don't yeah. ever actuate the safety. I detest the safety. It's completely unneeded. Uh, I love the clip, though, on the original Aegis. It's fantastic. Just a great blade. Now, I think it was a kind of a controversial blade with a lot of people. Some guys just oh. didn't like it for that delicate tip. They're like, well, I'm going to drop that on the sidewalk, and then it's mm. boom, done. And I read a lot of comments from TM Peers. Uh, I think... If I remember, if I were to summarize, about 75% were in favor of the Aegis, both the mini and the full size, and then maybe 25% just said, eh. I remember us having it. a pretty big series of disagreements. Uh, over the Aegis? Yep. Yeah, Because you've been moderating comments for, heck, oh, I'm just over a decade about now. When we filmed it, you and I, you liked it a lot more. I always thought it was kind of boring. Interesting. Well, there you go right there. You're part of the 25%. Just... Hold on. But looking at this knife, the original mini, mini Aegis. Remember, this is a mini. Yeah. Super lightweight. You're not excited about this? Not, not so much. No, sorry. Why? It's just boring. Oh. See, but this is about first cool. This is about reducing your loadout weight in a backpacking system or in, in my bug out kit system. Yeah. I'm all for it. Let me weigh it again to remind you guys. How light this is. Man, it's light. I do love the weight. 1.9 ounces. You sure you don't like it? 1.9 ounces on the original Mini Aegis. What's not to like? Okay, we're not reviewing this knife, even though we kind of are. I'm going to leave it in the background by that super cool Swiss F5. Look at that. Dude, that is so cool. Uh, the Germans and the Swiss and the Japanese do such great paint jobs on their planes for special events. And the Italians. Norwegians do too. The Italians do too. The Italians are there. Put the camouflage like a spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs>
everybody does but the Americans. It's like, yeah. well, how much is it going to cost to paint it for that special meetup? Yeah, it's uh, It's going to be like $5,000, sir. Yeah, we're not painting it. Germans are like, and the Swiss will go, yeah, no problem. We'll, we'll paint our planes for like a three-day <laughs> yeah. NATO meetup. And that goes back to the 80s. And yeah. some of the planes are going to roll on the table have and feature those really cool limited edition paint jobs. Blah, blah, blah. Patches at uh, Nut Fancy Big Cartel. Yeah. We're, tr we're trying to see if we can get that one in production again because that's a very popular, simple, classic patch. It's been out of yeah. stock for a long time. It was called the three-letter agency patch. That was the internal code for it. Is that? I didn't know that. Yeah. There's a lot of things I don't know about that website. Uh, Aegis AT. This is a redesign. They've been redoing a lot of their blades. We've reviewed some of them already. And believe it or not, uh, I like this blade a lot, but here's the big but. It really departs from the original Aegis formula. Okay, it's not that light. 4.4 ounces. And the I, mean, I wish I w looked up the original weight of the other Aegis, um, but I'll put it in the screen right now. It's going to be a lot lighter. A lot lighter for the full size blade. It was one of my all time favorite full size tactical blades. And yeah, tactical blade for sure. And this might be a tactical blade with the, the redesign, the Aegis AT. They're calling it a Gen 3 or a Mark 3. Um, one reason I'm a little bit hesitant to say it's a tactical blade is this FRN handle, GRN handle, it's just a little bit slickery. Slickery. Oh, we found it. 3.1 ounces on the original. Pretty good. 3.1 ounces on the original. So we've gained 1.3 ounces with the redesign. Yeah. It's a different knife. This is a different knife. However, it might pull that 25% into the fold that didn't like it for whatever reason. For one, gone is the very sharp and abrupt tip. Look at the different blade styles. They're really different. So this had a sharp tip. It swooped down at the tip. This, this one did, I mean. This one doesn't so much. It's just a drop point. Hmm. Right, 3.13 inch blade in this variation, and this is a an indigo handle, dark. I can't speak, dark gray blade, and D2 is a steel, and as Sog pretty much does forever, it's cryogenically treated, which sets them apart. Does that make a big difference to me? Honestly, no, not really. Not really. I mean, it's cool, but I don't think you need a cryoed steel. I'm just being honest, you know. Realigning the molecules and yeah. refining the grain structure. It sounds like, cool. Who cares? I like the idea that they put it in that cryogenic vault with Walt Disney's uh, still operational head. But He's coming back to life, dude. You know now. he is. It's just a matter of getting the right tech any day down. The real heavy cutting I do, anywho, will always be with my Sheffield. That one right there. I got a yellow one, dude. I don't think I've ever shown this one with a, uh, you know, carbide blade in it. Oh, 2019. You helped me with these, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So we spray those. They're just spray painted, Had by the way. Had a weekend spraying them down. It's fun. Do you still use them? Yeah. The spray painted ones? Yep. You like them? Yep. They're awesome. I think that shows you a lesson, too, that it was one of the things I kind of wish they had done with this. I would have liked the old Aegis a lot more if they had done colors. And well, for a okay. backpack and knife, uh, I don't orange. see why you wouldn't. Yeah, orange. orange would be good. The, that camo one I have in the BOK is amazing. Camo? It's super cool. I, I, I'm trying to remember. It's like a digital tan camo. Yeah. Something like that. Something to help you find it. Because if you drop this point in well the, taken. I in like the that dirt point. floor, you're not going to see it real quick. Yeah, this one might stick out a little bit better. Yeah. And this actually, speaking of colors, uh, themes, outdoor stuff, this reminds me of a lot of backpacking color yeah. schemes. Yep. Like North Face, Gregory Outdoor. You know, it's got the teal and the bright lime orange. Uh, I, I, I got to be honest, I'm not super enthralled with this coloration right here. I'd much rather have something like this. So this is a Trident AT right here. This is sick. That coloration is sick. Although it would blend into the fourth floor, which you're saying. Yeah. How about orange and black blade? I'd be on board with that. And they may come out with that in the yeah. future. Okay, so here's your blade. We talked about it. 3.13 inch. It's super sharp. This D2 steel with the Aegis. The new Aegis, and the tip is still very functional for that type of uh, medical work we we're talking about. Penetration-wise, it will work. It's still a delicate tip. I wouldn't abuse it, just like we said with this knife. If you drop it, you still will incur damage, and D2 is a little bit more brittle. I love the gray finish on it. Yeah. I love the flat ground on it. Love it. The one thing that's a little bit different, and the original Aegis was this way when I sharpened this one. On a consistent angle table, you're going to have to change your angle because there's really no consistent flat to put it on. So you're just going to change it, raise your angle up to what you want to sharpen it at, 
but as it comes out of box, it's so sharp. Really, all these SOGs as they're coming out of box are just uh, wins. Dual thumb studs right here. Plastic, by the way. Those are plastic. Isn't that weird? That is weird. Uh, I think they did it for the color tie-in because you yeah. can mold that into a color as opposed to coating it. There, yeah. There's no way you're gonna coat it and make it match that. It's yeah. gotta be plastic. It's light. Yeah, That's really cool. fast. Really fast in the operation, really fast. Assisted opening. I remember in the day when we were talking about the Aegis, I loved it and I raved about the assistant op uh, the assisted opening then. There were some guys that were like, yeah, I don't really like assisted openers. <laughs> I just never understood that. I don't see a downside. Uh, how about this, do you like it, the uh, safety? I like it more than the previous iteration, but yeah. I still don't feel like it's necessary yeah. and I would really be yeah. worried that it's gonna get bumped in the pocket. Right, this is your safety, and for whatever reason, SOG decided to put a safety on this, and uh, I have been carrying this, and I accident accidentally did engage the safety. Yeah. Uh, I don't like it. I hate the safeties. There's probably a way to remove it easily, although that would void the warranty. And SOG, by the way, is great with warranty. If you have any problems with your SOG blade, send it back. They take care of it. Clip, tactical doodle, talk to us. I like it. I do too. Plenty of space. It kind of bugs me when they do... We don't have anything with a small. When they say it's a lanyard hole, but it's so damn small you can't even fit most 550 cord through it. Oh, you're talking. I'm talking about the clip. You're talking oh. about the lanyard. Oh, I thought you were talking about this little no, go ahead. portion sticking out. This is cool. Yeah. Also plastic or nylon. It's probably nylon. Yeah, yeah that one can fit 550 big. cord. Big enough, even Easy. you could fit like a mini carabiner through it. Mm, would you put a carabiner on that? Let's see if you can. This know, is let a me big point one. the blade away from you so you're not going to get cooked. Curious. Dude. Yeah, look at that. You can hit your... Yeah. That's one of those cool. awesome ones. We use these all the time, by yeah. the way. These are awesome. These Night Eyes S-Beaners. They're awesome. All kinds of uh, different cool sizes. We'll put a link below, dude. Check it out. If you don't have a selection of those, you're yeah. missing out. I wouldn't necessarily carry it like that, but if you need... If you're traveling okay. or something. Fair enough. No, the clip. The clip is good. It really good looking, ties thematically into the dark gray finish of the D2 wow. blade. The one thing I don't like, there's a double screw encro en uh, encroachment, is what I'm trying to say, mm. into the area. See that? Yeah. This is a perfect representation of what I've talked about. So as your pants come up, it's going to be wearing tear from those screws. Yeah. They should have recessed it if they had area to do it. I don't know. Or if you got really thick stuff, if you're one of those guys that like freezes their jeans because they're raw denim and you're not supposed to wash it. You might not even be able to fit your pants through that little area yeah, there. Kind of a downside, but the clip itself I really like, and it's <laughs> rounded, melted, so there's no sharp edges. Nice. Pretty good. Here's a skeletonization of the liners. It's pretty aggressive, which makes me wonder why this weighs so much, 4.4 ounces. Yeah. Do you wish uh, it had no liners, tactical doodle? I would be interested in that. I would too. That would be a lot lighter, and for the kind of use you're subjecting it to, I bet you it would hold up all right. Yeah, I don't need liners, uh, but again, this is a departure from the original, at least the one we reviewed, Aegis Formula. At least that torsional rigidity that those liners provide. And we like this, though. So we have a double adjustable pivot point. I love that. If you ever need it, let's look at centering, as we always do. Perfect. Stop pin retention is fantastic, of course, not gonna come out. And if you want to use the safety, you can use the safety. There you go, I like it a lot, I really do. I like it more than I thought I would. The new Aegis AT. Uh, it doesn't mean, in my mind, it's one of these, because it's departed from the formula, because mostly of the weight, yeah. although I still like that really It took its greatest tip. strength and got rid of it in terms of going more yes, regular in the market. Ironically, I do kind of prefer this one. That's good you say that. It, you don't have to whisper it. Yell it. I like the traction on it, too. I know it's not. I think the traction is a little bit lacking. I don't know if it's really a tactical blade. It is How's lacking, it jumping on top? I didn't talk about it. But it's, it's pretty much gonna, worthless. It doesn't tear stuff up. Okay. Uh, true. True. And you can put, like, skateboard tape on the side uh, the side of it like I do. Well, here's my yeah, EDC yeah, today. I can cover it in super right glue and push it into some real fine sand and build my <laughs> own. This is easy. <laughs> Para 2, dudes. Love it. Um, the jimping, tell them about that. I don't think it's that great. Uh, yeah, it's, mm, it's there, standard. It's there. Compared standard. to that jimping though, on the Trident AT though. It's lacking. Dude, check this out, and we showed it to you before. Here it goes again. This this is what they should have done, SOG. WTH, man, why didn't you do this jimping here? 
So this jimping, look at the sharpness of the cut. Perfect, right? It's supposed to be a lazy Sunday morning on the, the lake. <laughs> this has the same dumb lock like we talked about in this uh, review. Which I will, I will say one thing about the lock that I'm sure someone out there would think. It's uh, fun to fidget with. Good which point. some people are... Good point. Because you have fidget like spinners that people are buying separately. Yeah. Yeah, but here's what's going to happen. Then you're going to, oh, yeah, I wonder what time my meeting starts. And you're going to leave it locked. And then you're going to need your blade like, oh, yeah. man, bad guy. Oh, crap. Damn, son. That's what's going to happen. Uh, go watch that review on the Trident AT. That's separate. Uh, I do have one competitive offering to offer up to you, Tasco Doodle. And it's from China, not made in America. Make sure I get the number right on this. I think it's the... Uh, 753, right? Yeah, F753. Okay, it's also assisted opening, and it very much reminds me of the, the new Aegis AT formula. If we can find a link below, we'll put it. This is the Firebird by Gonzo, and I've been putting these in the TMP Patreon Wilderness caches. It's F753 and 440C. Great knife, dudes. Look at this. And they have one in carbon fiber, which what? is pretty cool. Pretty cool. This one is beautiful. So it's got that G10 on it about the same level of traction as this one a little bit better maybe axis style lock look the same blank blade coating dude so it's dark gray yeah wicked sharp and the funny thing is is the f753 it it has the old aegis <laughs> profile look the, don't the blades look yeah. almost identical you can take care of slivers with it That's yes cool. this is a great blade super affordable for what you get Dual-sided pivot point adjust, adjustment again, uh, very uh, bench matey in yeah. its in its homaging. Look, they milled out the liners in this sucker. Really nice job. Let me weigh this one for you. I bet it's just going to be about the same weight. It's not a super lightweight knife. I'd say four point five. Exactly, it's the same weight, dude. Four point five ounces. Jimping is outstanding, and the reason why is because I did it. I actually cut that jimping in. That's how you do it. Yeah. And that's how they get you. Dual thumb studs on this. So the F753, it's going to be gone in a blink of an eye. So if yeah. you find one, get it. Get it. Uh, it's going to be way less expensive than the SOG Aegis. Uh, but it's a Chinese blade, and there's a movement by some guys. It's like, you know, I'm not buying Chinese no more. Well, and, this in that case, use our link below to buy the Aegis yeah, AT. This is Taiwan. I did support oh, that's the, right. the little Taiwanese. island fortress. Yeah, so Taiwanese, sorry. I was thinking this was put together in the U.S. So sorry. I want to help them Taiwan. shore up their uh, beach defenses. The Taiwanese? Yeah. Yeah. Designed in Seattle, made in Taiwan. Uh, we really like SOG. We really do. And it's exciting to see them come up with new designs that are intriguing, uh, different. Uh, the great color schemes, actually. And you guys may absolutely love this color. That's our tabletop review on the SOG Aegis AT. Thanks for subscribing, being part of our donation community, supporting all this nonsense. We appreciate it.